welcome to the listening room. My name is Mike Gopert and I am the owner and uh, creator of Tambor Dynamics. Tambor Dynamics is a small startup company here in Frisco, Texas. I specialize in audio room furniture, uh, accessories and, and decor. Uh, later this year I'm also going to be branching out into uh, my own speaker designs. So look, really looking forward to that. Um, I hope you've been uh, appreciating some of the videos that we've been posting on our new channel here the last couple of weeks, highlighting some of the fantastic artists and recordings uh, that we so love to listen to here. Um, and sharing that with you on the internet is, is, is a blessing. Uh, and we're just here to share music and, and our passion for, for, for music itself. Um, I have been an audiophile um, for most of my life. Uh, I grew up in the 70s. And my father was an audiophile. Uh, back then, I was able and fortunate enough to understand um, lis uh, about listening through mu to music through good equipment and what a difference that can make. Uh, although it can be a very expensive hobby, it doesn't really have to be. A lot of knowledge that you need to obtain is really um, about where to spend your money. Um, at least to start with, right? Like anything else, the longer you're into it, uh, the more in depth you get, uh, and you can get down in the doldrums of uh, audio file mania and start spending money on all sorts of things that make little difference. But you know, th these are all things that we're into. Like any other hobby, um, you can really spend a lot of money and, and get into something, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But to start out to really appreciate good music and good sound, you don't have to spend a fortune. And you can work your way up uh, from uh, basic systems into uh, very expensive systems. Um, but after college, I kind of got away from music a little bit, started my career, and got into other hobbies. Um, and now that um, I've, I just turned 50 a couple of years ago, I'm, I'm kind of circling back into my uh, initial love for audio. And so uh, I, my dad has passed down his uh, receiver to me. Uh, which was a vintage 1979 Yamaha CR2040. Y'all seen it in some of the videos, I think, if, if you look back there. Uh, fantastic receiver. I turned this media room into uh, just a pure listening room. I got rid of the TV, I got rid of the surround sound uh, system itself, and I really started modifying the room uh, with the room acoustics you see today. I can't stress enough uh, how important your room is. Um, a lot of us uh, aren't fortunate to have a, a, a dedicated room. I am in this particular house, so I'm very fortunate. Uh, it has a, a very uh, di a dimension to it that allows me um, to really fine tune my music here. But I, again, I can't stress enough how important it is. Room acoustics is really, really important. It's probably more important than a lot of things. You can take some average uh, price speakers and an average price receiver or uh, amplifier, and you can get pretty good sound if you understand um, how to place those speakers in the room, how to reduce uh, unwanted um, reverberation of sound from the side walls, the ceilings, and the floor, and the back wall when it comes to bass and bass response, being understand how to tame the bass in the room. Um, I'm a firm believer in the separation of the lower end bass from the mid-range and highs in a speaker only because it's so difficult to place um, everything if it's all in one cabinet in a position in a room that will maximize both i find that you really have to place the lower end bass the sub bass differently in a different position in the room than you do the mid-range and the highs the mid-range and the highs you're really it's all about sound stage it's all about uh, projecting an image behind the speakers to have that wide sound stage and to have very good um, articulation and sound. Um, a lot of times the amplification that's needed to drive mids and highs to get that kind of sound you want is not necessarily the same type of power and sound signature that you want from a bass speaker. And again, this is, this is my opinion, right? So there's a lot of opinions out there. But I prefer I've always found that I'm able to dial in sound in, in, in my room, especially this one, uh, where I can separate the two. And I can put the bass where it needs to go to maximize the bass and reduce um, the, the room, um, unwanted uh, sound signature in the room uh, through uh, bass traps on the ceiling, the back wall. 
and the, the corners and I can place my mid-range and my uh, treble um, in a position that gives me the best sound stage. Uh, I think that a system without bass is lifeless and a system with too much bass is just a mess. Um, bass can really drown out uh, the gorgeous part of the mid-range uh, that kind of uh, starts to the lower part of the mid-range that kind of intersects the bass. And even in this room, which is heavily treated, if I walk around this room, uh, the bass response is completely different from position to position. So it's all about optimizing the sound in the listening position. So my seat uh, is behind the camera here about six feet. Um, and my speakers here are pulled about four feet from the front wall and three feet from the side walls. Um, maybe a little bit more than that. They're in pretty much a third positions in the room. And what I get from that is I get a tremendous holographic soundstage behind the speakers. The whole presentation for everything is behind the speakers. Anyway, I'm getting a little off, but it's, it's important uh, when we start talking about the Doge 10 or the Dodge 10, sorry, I keep mispronouncing the name of that company. Um, because uh, I, I think if, if I were to use the Dodge 10, um, it has limited power in a way. It, it's got 30 watts of channel class A and I think 60 or 65, 70 watts uh, class AB um, with peaks up to 110. Um, I don't know if it's the right amplifier for a very large uh, system that had uh, large subs or large 15 to 12 inch speakers in it, right? I, I don't know if it can power that kind of speaker or not. Uh, but in my case, this amplifier works fantastic in my room because I've got very efficient um, speakers. Um, these are 90 dB efficient, uh, and they, they, they cut off at 80 hertz. So I've got these uh, cycled off or crossed over at 80 hertz and above, and then 80 and below is handled by my two 12-inch uh, sealed subwoofers. Okay, so one of the first things uh, I'd like to start out uh, the Dodge 10 discussion on are, are some um, uh, prep steps, I guess, or things to consider when you, when you receive it. Hopefully you're watching this video before you receive your Dodge 10. Um, if so, then I, I hope these uh, little considerations will be beneficial to you. The first thing is the, the, the Dodge 10 is going to come in a pretty sizable um, heavy crate. Uh, it's a box with a, like kind of like a, a shell, a wood shell around it, around the corners, around the middle to give it support and to help, help it uh, stay in good condition during uh, its journey across the ocean. Um, it's very well packaged, uh, extremely well done. Um, it would take a lot of uh, physical force to damage it. Um, thank God mine came perfectly fine. Everything was great. When you get the crate, you know, it's going to be up to you whether or not you keep try to keep it or not, right? I, I try to take my time opening and, and prying off the wood portions of the outer shell uh, so that I can keep them in case I needed to ship the unit off for maintenance. Uh, again, it's, it's, it's very heavy, right? So uh, just shipping off the cardboard box, uh, that would be a, a little bit of a risk. So if you, can, if you can maintain the integrity of the wood pieces as you pry them off, I, I simply used uh, like a, a crowbar. You can use the back of a, um, a hammer and just work, your, work that, those wood pieces uh, loose and you can wiggle them and pull them off. Be very careful. Uh, there's some pretty long nails, uh, thin nails in there. So just be extremely careful when you, when you do remove it. Don't lay them around the floor or anything. Um, you, know, you could easily step on them and really hurt yourself. Uh, do it. Do it in a well-protected area, away from the kids and whatnot. Uh, I, you know, I was successful in, in keeping the integrity of that. I, I then boxed it all back up and put it in my uh, in my closet uh, in case I ever needed it. Just just something to think about. The second thing is the Dodge 10 comes fully assembled, uh, except for this cage, the, the protection cage here. Right. So the protection cage will come in a couple of separate packages that have these round rails. These base, these base rails and these two side pieces. Uh, inside the Doge 10 packaging, you're also going to get the remote. It needs batteries. Batteries aren't shipped, by the way. Um, and it also has a, a pack of fuses and it has a pack of extra um, Allen wrench uh, bolts here uh, that look just like the ones that you need to build the cage with. Um, I made the mistake of opening that package and then I, I did a little quick count and there wasn't enough bolts for the number of holes that were that were needed to put this together. Um, 
you don't need those bolts. Those are extra uh, in case you lose some of the ones that are already a part of this. What you'll find is these round rails here and these square um, bottom pieces of the cage already have the bolts in each side, right? So you have to undo them from those and then everything is already self-contained within the rails, the base, and the side pieces. So just save you a little time there. <laughs> it took me five minutes to figure that out. Um, the side pieces are really have two different sides. There's a flat side and there's um, there's a side where wherever there's a bolt, there's a, a little bit of a concave indention, right? Make sure you put the, the concave por portions on the outside, right? Not on the inside. Otherwise, the uh, they won't fit flush, right? It's not it's not that big a deal. It's pretty easy uh, to figure out. The, also, the bottom rails here have these magnets on the bottom. The, these I think face down, right, and not up. Uh, besides that, it was fairly easy to put together. Five ten minutes, uh, just no no big deal. Everything fit in just just perfectly. Don't oh uh, another thing. Don't over tighten the bolts, right? Just just tighten them you know, just enough. I know a lot of you out there are OCD fanatics and you <laughs> really want to wrench down on things, right? Don't do it. Just do it tight enough, okay? You get it all set up, put together, which is, again, a piece of cake. You get it in the right spot. You power it up, power, put the power cable on it. Um, you have to auto bias it before you can use it. So uh, after you put the tubes in, or anytime you change the tubes, you have to auto bias it. Uh, I did had a little correspondence with Mark. He contacted me before uh, I received my unit, and he told me that, you know, when you first turn it on, you gotta let it warm up, do its thing, and then you gotta auto bias the tubes. And then after 15 to 20 minutes of listening, you should re auto bias the tubes. I I think that has to do with some kind of a break in uh, procedure. Okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you right now. Um, how to do that okay now I've already auto biased this piece um, many days ago and I've done many auto biasing since uh, when I changed the tubes right but um, so it's gonna be it's gonna act a little bit different here than it went than, than when you first initially turn it on but after you have everything set and it's all plugged in your tubes are in there's a power switch back uh, on the top uh, uh, right side if you're looking from behind the unit left side if you're facing this way you flip it on, you'll see this little red light here above the standby come on. That means that it's got power. So the next step in here is to go ahead and push that standby switch. Now, it's going through a warm-up right now, and you see the standby uh, uh, light is, is flashing. Now, everything I'm about to show you, you can either do with the remote or you can do with the unit. Obviously, for the sake of this video, I'm doing it with the front panel of the unit. But everything that I'm about to go through, the labels of these buttons are, are, are the same as what's on the remote. Okay, they're on the bottom of your remote. All right, so after it's done warming up, <clears throat> um, you'll see that it, it defaults to class A, okay? Um, so that's fine. Let's leave that alone for right now. What we need to do is auto bias the tubes. Oh, one other thing. When you first plug it in the first time, uh, I had my DAC on. Obviously, I had the music paused, but I had my DAC connected to the amplifier. And this source light was rotating counterclockwise just continually, right? And I could not do the auto bias procedure until I tuned that to be at my DAC or some steady input. This is the, the source is where you change it from DAC, CD, input, auxiliary, whatever, right? So it was rotating. So I just simply stopped the rotation by just turning the knob and it stopped. And then I rotated it to DAC. And then I could begin the auto biasing procedure. I don't know if that's typical or that would just... Happened to me, I'm not sure, might happen to you. Uh, okay, okay, so once you select the source and you're, everything's steady here, there's two buttons that you're gonna be interested in. One is called bias checking and one is called bias reset, okay? So to start the auto biasing procedures, you, you click on the bias checking. So when you, you do that, you'll see the, the, the source lights here, one through four for the tube source, they will either be, they might be red at the, in the initial stage. Right now, mine are all blue. Now, to kick off the auto biasing, you're going to have to hit the bias reset. Now, when I hit that out bias reset, you notice those lights turn red, and they will turn blue as the tubes are checked. When the biasing is complete, this blue light above the bias reset will go off. This may cycle two or three times from blue to red. So, uh, as long as you end up with a blue state, notice how this bias reset light is now off. That means the auto biasing is complete. All my lights for my tubes are all blue. 
Now, if you have a, a red light indicator here, you either got a bad tube or you've got some kind of incompatible tube. So I'm using KT-88s. I think if you use KT-150s or something, Mark said that some of them are incompatible. So be careful going away from the stock recommendation of the tubes um, and the brands. I don't know. You know, there's, there's a lot of combinations out there. Bottom line is after the bias is over, that light on the bias reset is off. Everything is blue. You're good. The last step is to take it out of auto biasing mode. In order to do that, you, you click on the bias checking one more time. Okay, now both of these lights for bias checking and bias reset are off. All of the indicators of the tubes are off and we're ready to go. Just make sure your source is selected. Um, let me go ahead and kick off some music here. And there we go. Okay, now that we know how to auto bias the amp, I'm gonna show you next is um, how to switch it from class A to class AB. As you notice right now, the music's still going. And if I come over here, we're in class A, if you remember. If I, if I hit this button, the class button, it does not switch, right? It stays in class A, it doesn't switch to class B. So you can't on demand switch this amp from class A to class AB. In order to switch the, the class, you have to Rebias the tube, so it's part of the rebiasing step. So it's an additional step in there. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So to, to switch it, you don't have to shut the music off. You don't have to shut your whatever your selected input source is off. You can leave it going. So to initiate the, the switch over from class A to class AB, first hit the bias checking button, just like we did when we auto bias the tubes. Okay. At that point, I can check. I can switch the class button now. So if I push that button, I can switch from class A to class AB and all the tube lights go red again, at this point, I'm gonna hit the bias reset button, just like I did when we biased the tube in the first place, which so is one additional step in there. Again, you hit the bias checking to get it into bias mode, you switch the class, and then you hit the bias reset. Now it's going through its normal reset process here. Uh, these lights will begin to go from red to blue, and then when the biasing is finished, that bias reset button will turn off, right? So it's just a matter of uh, waiting for everything to now they're all blue that's great got to wait for that bias reset button to turn off it just turned off now the last step is to take it out of bias mode right bias checking mode to do that just hit the bias checking um, uh, button again and there we are our music is now playing uh, class AB So now that I've kind of taught you how to auto bias the amp and the differences of how to switch between class A and class AB, um, uh, a little personal note about the two, right? Uh, given my current situation and, and my speaker configuration, class A, uh, I believe is 30 watts of channel, uh, continuous power, and class A power is always on, right? So the, the uh, amp is actually producing 30 watts consistently whether you have volume on or not. Um, a lot of audiophiles love class A because the power is instantaneous. There is no ramp up, ramp down uh, for, for dynamic sound or uh, dynamic energy for the differences between lows and highs. Uh, at the same time, class A, this amplifier can get pretty hot. Um, it's actually putting out a good amount of heat right now. I mean, not, not so much that I can't touch the cage or anything, right? But you don't want to touch the, the tubes directly. So if you have young kids or, or you have pets or it's in a place where people could actually hit the tubes while it's on, make sure you have the cage over it. Highly recommended, right? Because um, I actually was in the process of changing the tubes just five minutes after I started it and uh, they're extremely hot. <laughs> so use, even using a, a pretty thick towel, I can feel the heat through that. So be very careful in, in class A. Class AB, it seems to be uh, not as bad. I, I don't know if that, again, is my perception or my particular um, you know, use case at the time, but it didn't seem quite as hot. With that said, be very careful where you put the amplifier. Uh, according to the instructions, you need to have at least, uh, I forgot exactly how, much, uh, how many centimeters they stated, but you need to have some room around the amplifier uh, and not have anything too close to it. That's just a safety precaution. When I first installed the amp, I actually had it on this, uh, my middle shelf here, and it gave me about one inch of clearance between the top shelf. And after, uh, you know, even 15 to 20 minutes of playing the amp uh, at, at pretty good volume, and Class A doesn't matter, it's just on, uh, the, top, the top part of the wood underneath was pretty hot. Now, 
I don't think it was so hot that it would cause a problem with the wood and actually catch it on fire. But with that said, I, I think you need to be very careful. Make sure it's got room to breathe. I ended up moving it from the middle shelf to the top shelf for now, uh, just so it can breathe very nicely, okay? Um, yeah, so with that said, the, the, the sound signature between Class A and Class AB, there is a difference. Class A uh, seems to be a, a little bit more warm and seductive. Uh, I, I feel um, so the sound stage is a little bit more dense. Um, Class AB, uh, a little lighter um, and a little bit, I, I, I can't really tell if it's a lot more dynamic or not. Um, it, it seems to be a little bit more dynamic. It obviously has a lot more headroom. Um, again, you, you've got almost double the watts uh, and you, you've got a lot more peak power. In my particular case though, uh, using my satellites for my mids and my highs and my sub, uh, I have a, a subwoofer that's got two 12 inch active drivers, it's sealed. It's, it's powered uh, through class D internal to the sub, right? So I don't need that extra power. 30 watts is plenty, plenty to drive these monitors. These are 90 dB efficient. Uh, plenty to drive them at decibel levels that will hurt, start to hurt your ears. So um, at least in my case, perfect uh, I, perfect implementation for Class A. I love it. Uh, I prefer Class A over Class A B here, even for all all types of music. But again, that's my system. Your system is going to be different based on your speakers and your layout and everything else. So um, I, I've read online a lot of people like Class A B better than Class A. Again, it's a personal taste, right? Beauty behind this is you can run it in both both modes. That's that's fantastic. Bad part is you can't do it dynamically, right? It takes auto biasing uh, in order to do that. Small trade-off, I'm fine with that. Uh, I think the power and functionality uh, that it brings to us uh, is, that's a minor nuisance. So final thoughts here. Um, I have been in this room uh, again uh, for the last three days, really enjoying this amplifier. I am one that um, has always been cautious of tube-based equipment. I'm a little bit of a um, detail nut. Uh, I tend to like um, real refined edges. I like detail. I like to hear every nuance in the song. At, at the same time, if it's over analytical, I'm not, I'm not there, but I do need the detail. I, I'm, I, it's kind of used to it. Uh, it's my personal taste. Um, I tend to like uh, a little flat, a flat uh, response across the spectrum. Um, so the tubes that I have personally selected for this, um, I, I've done so with, with my taste in mind, right? So I think with the tubes I have in here right now and, and my speaker and setup, I, I find this amp um, very dynamic, uh, extremely, the sound stage is extremely wide and it, it, it was before, but it, it's kept it. Um, the imaging is fantastic. The overall details are, are, are amazing, it, uh, just amazing. At the same time, a lot of the um, recordings that I used to think were a little bit sibilant using my Yamaha uh, transistor-based amp in, in my monitors, uh, uh, some of those songs that were sibilant uh, at times, this amp just kind of rounds the tops off just a little bit and it, <laughs> it makes them 100% enjoyable. I, I no longer have to kind of like, Ugh you know, from time to time, which I used to do in my listening position if I had the volume uh, raised to a certain level, right? Now I can enjoy it as loud as I want and I don't quite get that sibilance anymore. Everything's nice and rounded. Um, the, the impact, the front end and the trailing end of, of, of most of the um, details in a song are just rounded off just a little bit. It's something to do with the decay and the impact. It just kind of makes the sounds, uh, it's almost three dimensional in a way. It's hard to describe, um, but the sound stage itself is a lot more, I, I, I want to call it dense. I don't want to say that in a bad way. It's not like the sound stage is, is collapsed. It's still wide, but there's just more meat there. It's, it's, um, I still have very good separation of sound, but compared to my Yamaha, things are a little bit more, a little bit more, there's a little bit more meat on the bone on everything. And so every sound has a little roundness to it, has, a, has some succulence to it. It's, uh, I, I played some electronic music uh, earlier and um, the popping and the ins and outs of the electronic music was just so organic and so round and so just, it almost felt like a, like 
a piece of fruit flying by, you could just take a bite out of and let it go. Uh, it's kind of a strange concept, uh, a way of thinking, but it really is amazing. Um, I really enjoyed it, and I think I'm going to continue to play around with the tubes. It's going to take, it's a journey. Those things are, uh, tubes aren't cheap, as you know. Um, just to give you a little a heads up, I buy all my tubes at Upscale Audio. I'm, I'm in no way sponsored by them. Um, Kevin, I, I've, I've interacted with Kevin and his gang through email, uh, asking them, you know, what are some common tubes that I can try? Here's my taste. This is what I'm looking for. They've been outstanding. Uh, they'll ask about the equipment. They know about most equipment out there, and they can give you some recommendations. They've been in the business a long time. They're out in California, and they have three stages of tubes. Uh, they have their their uh, every tube comes in like three different levels, um, and depending on how how good the tube is, not every tube measures the same, even come from the same manufacturer. So they have like their common stock, and then they have an elevated stock, and then they have like Kevin Stash. I don't ever buy like the top line. I usually buy the middle layer, middle of the a line there. It's good enough. Um, and, and they warrant their tubes, and most of their tubes come out uh, from from them already burned in a little bit. So every box that I get has all the statistics about the tubes on it. And it also uh, has a number of hours that it's been played. Uh, these KT88s, for instance, um, were burned, already burned in by Kevin and Upscale Audio for 70 hours. So they're not brand new tubes. And then they remeasure them after 70 hours to make sure that they're still quality tubes and they're all measured the same. So when I bought the four, I got a matched pair of four and they all came in at a, a pretty uh, even keel, right? So that's nice. Uh, because a lot of times tubes can take, uh, you know, 100 to 200 hours to truly open up. It probably depends on the tubes. It probably depends on your ear. Um, but coming out of the box already 70 uh, hours burned in on them, uh, you can look at that as a bad thing. I look at that as a good thing. Um, it's 70 less hours I have to worry about. And when I plug these tubes straight in and turn and turn on the amplifier, I was I was really I was really happy. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, so um, again, I highly recommend Kevin and the gang. Uh, Mark is another uh, Mark from uh, Doge uh, uh, Dodge Audio, another really good resource to ask to. He he will give you his recommendations as well. All right. So overall, I'm I'm very happy with it. Um, do I miss the Yamaha? Yeah, because uh, the I uh, you know I still have it here. I'm never going to get rid of it. It's going to be in my family forever. I'm going to pass it down to my children too. I I refurbished it. It's going nowhere, right? But at the current moment, um, it's sitting there. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to plan on uh, switching back to it anytime soon. I am, I'm over the moon right now with uh, the sound that I'm getting in my room with the Dodge 10. Uh, and I'm looking forward to playing around with some, uh, some new tubes over time, right? So I hope all this information helped you out. Um, again, if there's anything that, any questions uh, or concerns about anything I've said here, if there's anything that needs to be corrected, please leave a comment below. I'm by no means uh, consider myself an expert at anything. I think the more you know, the more you realize that you know nothing, right? That's my philosophy in life. I'm always willing to learn from others. So again, if there's anything I can help you out with, uh, I, I would say go to Mark first. Um, he's the official spokesman for Dodge. Um, I'm in no way uh, affiliated with Mark. Mark's been very helpful to me. Um, I, I really appreciate his candor. Uh, they've been under a tremendous amount of stress with all the orders lately, so be patient. Uh, I think the, the equipment is well worth it. And um, I look forward to continuing to put out these videos for you. If you, if you like this, please subscribe and like it. Uh, I'm going to continue to put out new videos every week uh, around the artists I love and the music I love, and I'll keep you informed with anything I do in this room. And um, please visit my website and my Etsy store. I'll leave those links below. I really do appreciate your patronage, and um, happy listening, and God bless.